The Spider-Man No Way Home trailer has finally dropped. It did have to get some stitches because at first it looked like a pre-alpha build of a video game, but now we have it in all of its glory. And it looks amazingly spectacular. The cinematography looks stunning and the MCU continues to unfold in such creative and intelligent ways. But we still have a way to go until it gets inevitably delayed before its release in December. So today I- Oh. Oh, right, okay. So today I'm gonna break down the trailer for you guys, point out some missed references, and explore some theories that are definitely going to end up being true, and if they're wrong, I'm gonna fault the movie for not giving me something I was never promised, instead of blaming myself for getting my hopes up. Ramones Blitzkrieg bot lyric for the title card, don't read this part of the script out, this is for when editing. Hey, oh! Let's go! Near the beginning of the trailer, we see sp- I can't f- I can't, I can't do the video like this. Oh my god! Hey, oh, let's go! Okay, so near the opening of the trailer, we see Spider-Man swinging, and we have this shot where Zendaya is poking Spider-Man's eye, and I'm pretty sure this is referencing Max's iconic line in Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I'm gonna put my thumb through your eye, you little bitch! After this, you can hear a voice say that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, which is obviously referencing what happened in the previous film, Spider-Man I Can't See My House From Here, where Spider-Man was Peter Parker. So I think it's just really cool to see all these intricate details in the MCU and see how Marvel are just keeping up with their continuity and absolutely smashing the competition. Then we see that he's handcuffed to a desk because he is a 25-year-old man committing fraud, pretending to be a 16-year-old boy. And as we see later in the trailer, he broke into the school, which, you know, is obviously going to raise a whole bunch of red flags. Continuing on, this shot I love. It is so funny. That I love. I absolutely love. The, this protest card thing uh, says devil in disguise which is a very thoughtful reference to how fans thought Mephisto, a devil from the comics, would be in WandaVision and then all got appropriately mad when that was not the case. But there's also a chance this could be referencing something else. Skipping over to later on, we see Doctor Strange and he's acting a bit out of character. People are theorizing that that's not actually him, you know, maybe it's a scroll or maybe it's Mephisto. Uh, to which I say no, it's Benedict Cumberbatch. This is this has been public information for like nearly seven years now, I don't- Going back, we have this shot of Zendaya, and I think because this has been confirmed to be a multiverse film where we could be exploring alternate universes, I think this means we're gonna go into the Euphoria universe and see Zendaya shooting heroin into her veins. Why? Because in this shot, she looks pretty sad, and pretty much all she does in that show is just be sad and then try to kill herself. Okay, here we see him look at some Doctor Strange decorations, and this is a pretty clear showcase of capitalism, as a big company is likely making a lot of money from these while Doctor Strange is not collecting any residuals from it. Which is actually a very well hidden reference to the first Spider-Man MCU film, Spider-Man Coming Home, where they make you root against working class citizens who had their jobs stolen from them by a billionaire who has killed thousands if not millions of people and has ties to terrorist organizations. He goes to visit Doctor Strange and we are given the main premise of what the film is about. Spider-Man wants people to forget who he is because it makes his life harder. So he tries to clear his name by getting Doctor Strange to do some magic. And this is obviously drawing inspiration from the much loathed comic series Spider-Man Unlimited, episode Worlds Apart Part 1 of 2, which is bullshit because anyone with a brain knows that there's actually four parts, where to try and clear his name, he steals a rocket ship. And it's the only way to clear my name. Okay, okay, right. This is a blink and miss it one. If you go frame by frame, you can see... Pride flag. And this has essentially confirmed that Spider-Man Drew Garfield is gonna be in this film. Because he famously wanted Peter Parker to be bisexual, and then Sony were like... <laughs> Serious? And then we have this shot of Spider-Man falling and Doctor Strange flying after him, which is a very clear visual reference to the first Avengers, where Iron Man fell through that wormhole, but is also a reference to Infinity War, where he is falling because he's like, Oh, I can't breathe! And so Iron Man shoots the Iron Spider suit after him, and then it lands on his back, and then even though it started on his back, the final shot of it forming on him is on his back, which is... What's the budget for this fucking film? Ah, right. 
and uh, no one noticed that. And here we see Doctor Strange wearing a, a rather peculiar outfit. He's wearing all black, and this is obviously setting up some sort of Frankenstein situation where Doctor Strange has messed around and created- Um, actually, Frankenstein was the name of the scientist that made the zombie. The zombie was actually called Frankenstein's mo- SHUT THE FUCK UP! Every time someone brings this up, here you are, you always fucking pop up! WE KNOW! WE KNOW! Fuck! Anyway, uh, anyway, he's on top of a train, which is a reference, an homage, if you will, to an older Spider-Man movie, which everyone loves, and I'm pretty sure is most people's favourite, and anyone who doesn't like it is genuinely an idiot. Spider-Man 2, as in Into the Spider-Verse, where Miles is learning to swing, and Peter B. Parker's face smashes into the side of a train, and the snowman face gets squashed, and it's very funny, I love that film. Okay, this shot is actually really interesting, because it's actually a reference to Doctor Strange, where Doctor Strange is like, actually, magic is bullshit. And he says that to Tilda Swinton, and then Tilda Swinton's like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. But it is also a reference to Marvel getting lazier because they know Marvel fans will eat up whatever shit they put out by not paying their VFX artists when they're working overtime because this effect looks. Oh, it looks bad. And this and this is also referencing the next shot as well. And this wide shot really excites me because it shows how we will go into the Spider-Man PS4 universe in this movie. Now, as someone who absolutely loves Daredevil and berated their nan for telling them off because they wouldn't stop crying about how Netflix cancelled it, I've been really <laughs> hoping that the rumours of Charlie Penis's returning as... Charlie Pe... <laughs> I've been really hoping that the rumours of Charlie Cox returning as Daredevil in this film to be Peter's lawyer are true, and this shot confirms it. This is a picture of Jon Favreau, who was in the 2003 Daredevil film with someone whose mum's name just so happens to be Martha. Right, now this shot is incredibly intriguing, there's been a lot of discourse about this on the World Wide Web and there. You know, pe people are like, oh, is that, is that Venom? Is that Super Mario Goomba from the first Tassim film? But luckily, I can finally put that question to rest with my super photoshop skill, so let's just enhance the image. And boom. It's Aunt May's crushing debt from living in New York City for 20 years. This shot of that one police detective from that HBO show, Harry, has also got a lot of people talking because of how weird it looks. The lighting is just really off. Almost like she's been superimposed onto the image to hide something, maybe. Once again, we can use my super amazing Photoshop skills to uncover what she is hiding. So if we just trap... Oh, well that's... Disappointing. Wait, if you take away the T, you've got an anagram of honing. Now take away the G and the E. In Raimi's Spider-Man 3, New Goblin had these orange spiky balls which would hone in on its targets. Oh my god. Holy shit, New Goblin is gonna be in this film. Okay, so I guess we're just not gonna have any Green Goblins in this film. And I have triples. The penultimate shot of the trailer is also very interesting, because it says the major motion picture comes out December 17th, but if you go over to the Australian trailer, it says that it's in cinemas Boxing Day. But Boxing Day is December 26th. It's not the 17th. So I think this is a subtle nod to the multiverse, because there must be an alternate universe out there where Boxing Day is on the 17th instead. Something that I'm not entirely sure about. If, you, if you're if you sure about it, then maybe comment down below. Uh, but here it says exclusively in movie theaters everywhere. But uh, they do know that pirate But that's just a straight up lie. Because here, let me tell you about this thing called pirate and now what you've all been waiting for, the very last shot of the trailer is this. And this just straight up, you can't even debate it. This has confirmed that Tobey Maguire Man is going to be in this film. Because if you look closely, this is a PS5 controller, which I mean, I don't get why they're advertising because I can't get a PS5 anyway, which is, you know, great because I can't wait to play Horizon Forbidden West on a jet engine. Okay, let's play one of my favorite games in recent years, Horizon Zero Dawn. Let's just turn it on. Okay. Um, okay, <laughs> it, it does get a bit loud when it's, you know, first booting things up, but it, it does, over time, it does get quieter, eventually it will, it, it will get quieter, it just takes a really- But anyway, if you look closely on the PS5 controller, the left analog stick looks very familiar. It has a striking resemblance to Mysterio's fishbowl helmet. And who played Mysterio? Jake Gyllenhaal. And if you remember correctly, after filming the first Spider-Man film, Tobey Maguire was all like,
oh, guys, my back really hurts. you got to give me more money. And then they were like, no, nah, we're not giving you more money. Bye. And then they recast Peter Parker as Jake Gyllenhaal. And then Tobey Maguire was like, oh, wait, no, wait a minute. My back's fine now. Yeah, give me, uh, hire me again, please. And therefore, that's how that confirms that Tobey Maguire is going to be in this film. That doesn't... <laughs> And trust me, what I said does make sense. You just clearly aren't smart enough to understand what I just said. Anyway, I'm gonna go now because that body is really... Oh, it's really starting to stink and I kind of need to clean it up before my parents come back because I don't, re I don't really want them to see this. I've been good the past couple of weeks, so we might as well reward you with some McDonald's. We just got your usual. Uh, you should like it. Uh, Jimmy, what... Jimmy, are you fucking kidding me? Again? For fuck! Alright, calm down, I know we've been having a laugh. Yes, this is my impression of your year 10 science teacher, but I am actually excited for this film. Ever since the Toby and Andrew rumours started, I denied them as I didn't want them to be true, as it sounds bad. And when Fox and Melina confirmed they were back, I just completely wrote this film off and suspected it would be god-awful nostalgia bait. But the trailer has actually got me a bit hyped, and I am looking forward to seeing it. Because even though there's a very high chance it will still be bad, which, I mean, you know, there's no way this won't be at least a little bit messy, there's also no way that it isn't going to be fun, right? Right? Oh guys, come on, just let me have fun again, please, I'm begging you. Oh my god, this is terrible. Why am I doing this? I haven't done any of my homework. And here I am doing this. What am I doing? This, oh god, man. I can't fucking see!